Today I want to tell you about something really cool that just happened to me, something that I learned and I don't know who else would appreciate hearing about this except for you guys. <laughs> so stick around, I'm going to share with you the experience that I had when I was on laughing gas at the dentist's office and then I'm going to tell you what I just learned about it because this was almost probably a year later, many, many, many months, probably almost a year later and I just learned what happened. Stick around. Hi, and welcome back to The Wholeness Shift. I'm Veronica, and I teach people about easy, practical spirituality. If this interests you, hit the subscribe button below. Excuse my bedhead today. I have no plans on filming a video. Um, I know I filmed other ones where I look even worse, but we're all family, it's okay. <laughs> So it's a lazy Sunday. I'm still in my pajamas and comfy clothes. And I'm sitting here watching a show on Gaia called, what's it called? Initiation. <laughs> and if you haven't seen this show, it's really awesome. And I'm learning so much. The host is a man who claims to have access, full access to the Akashic records and to all of his past lives. And so he's doing a lot of teaching on dimensions and things like that. And seriously, I'm learning so, so much. If you have Gaia, you should watch this show. So let me tell you first what happened like a year ago, and then I'll get to what happened today. Okay, so I had to go to the dentist for a procedure last year, and my body metabolizes Novocaine super fast. Like most people could go in for a filling and they might get a shot or two of Novocaine and be good for like four hours. I will be good for about four minutes. Like for one normal filling that takes like 20 minutes, half hour, however long that takes, I will, they'll usually max me out on the doses that they can give me. It takes like 11 or 12 shots. Like every few minutes I'll need another shot and it just metabolizes that fast, it goes away. So we figured out last year that if they combine it with something else, like first of all, they have to order this special long acting Novocaine and that will usually last me through the procedure as long as it's um, combined with something else like nitrous oxide or laughing gas or something like that. So, because then even if it starts to wear off a little bit, it potentiates each other. And then even if it starts to wear off a little bit, I'm like stoned on laughing gas, don't care as much. Okay, so that's why as a 47 year old woman, I still need laughing gas. <laughs> okay, so I'm laying there in the dentist chair last year. And you know, if you've ever had laughing gas, you know that it can give you like crazy experiences, dreams, whatever. And this was no different except this time I didn't even know how to, to describe it. All I know is that it was like this existential experience that I had and I was shown something that I've had trouble articulating to other people what it was, but I'm gonna do my best. So I was laying there during this procedure and I remember taking a big whiff of this laughing gas and I, just, I felt so stoned. And I thought, there's no way this can kill me, right? And as soon as I thought that, I was shown, I didn't know how to describe it. It's so hard to describe it. Okay, imagine if you took a paintbrush, like a wide paintbrush, and you dipped one end in white paint and the other end in red paint, and then you put it on the piece of paper and like made a circle. And how the brush strokes, like, the one end of the brushes might stop here, but the other end swirl around to here, and it would be this mixture of like white and then pink and red um, ombre effect. Okay, so that's the first part of it. It did that, but on each of the little brush strokes, this one went to here, this one went a little further, this one went a little further, this one went all the way around. On each of those brush strokes, I was shown a movie strip, a timeline. I was shown that from this starting point in time, I could have multiple outcomes 
and I could choose which one I wanted to do. Like if I could just take a deep breath, stop there, nothing happened, I finished the procedure, I woke up like normal. I could take it a little bit further and decide to give the people in the office a scare. I mean, that wasn't the intention to give them a scare, but like if I went further with it and really decided to get high on this stuff, I could get into trouble and they would be startled and they would have to like shake me to wake me up. If I decided to take it a little bit further, I could code and like be out and they would have to stop and resuscitate me. And if I took it even further than that, I was shown that I would pass away, they would be unable to resuscitate me and how that would affect them in their daily life. They would go home that day knowing that their patient died and I could see how that would affect them and traumatize them for like a long time to come. But I was shown how off of that single point in time, how all of these possible outcomes were available. And I wasn't sure what to make of that. And then I was watching this show last night and he was talking about, um, well, he's talking about the eighth dimension, but he was referring back to the fourth dimension. Let me pull up this video and then I'll show you. So in other episodes, he's talked about how um, the first dimension is where consciousness lies. That's where all of the ideas in the mind is. The second dimension is where that gets split into two because one of the universal laws is polarity. So it splits into two and you have a positive and negative charge. The third dimension is where you experience all of the things that you've created. Um, the fourth dimension is where you can experiment, where you create, all of these ideas are created and the fourth dimension is where you can experiment with them and play with them. Anything's possible. And each of those first four dimensions is a point. They make a square, which is the base of a pyramid. So I'm just gonna play a little clip of this and I'll let you see what I saw and then we'll talk. Experimentation, integration, and transcendence. And every time you have done the circle, the four statements, the four pillars start to move a little bit in order to show you different perspectives so you can create different lives and different perceptions of the same issue. So, so as it starts to spin, it shows you all of the variations of the possibilities of those timelines or of that situation. And I, a light bulb went on and I was like, that's exactly what I saw when I was tripping on <laughs> laughing gas. I was I had access, consciously had access to the fourth dimension. And when I had pondered a situation, I was shown all of the variations of that possible situation. I think that's so cool that I got to see that and I wanted to share it with you. So I know this was a bit of a little bit of excited rambling, but who else do I share this stuff with? Nobody else cares. I told Fred and he was like, hmm. Okay. He doesn't get it, but I'm going to be talking a lot more about dimensions soon because I'm learning a lot from this show. So if you have the opportunity to go watch it, go watch it and then we'll talk about it. All right. Thanks you guys. Thanks for listening to me. Let me know your thoughts.